Hello and welcome to our Facebook Live tonight. We have a special guest with us here at Touch Light Chiropractic. Um, we have Judy Hansen, who is a medical intuitive, and she's going to talk to us about the possibilities of changing your DNA. How exciting is that? Thank so you. let's just go through a couple of housekeeping things first. Everybody knows bathroom is right there. Please help yourself to snacks. Um, and just enjoy the evening. So I'm gonna leave it with Judy and let's just see what happens. Okay, thank you. Welcome everyone. All right, so I'm gonna begin. It's called, the, tonight's talk is called The Origin of Your DNA. And I wanna just give you an idea of how easy it is to change your DNA. And all we know, and I'm not a scientist, I'm a spiritual, I'm coming from the spiritual aspect of it. And science is saying, that 45% of our DNA is spoken for, and they can talk about it under a microscope and proteins and this and that and what it makes up. Then I've heard that it's only like 2%, like 98% of our DNA is considered empty. So they're saying that there's only, um, science is now showing only 2% of our DNA is being used. And that is we can reproduce our physical appearance our, our genes or genetics of, um, of the chromosomes. That's what science is talking about. I'm talking about your spiritual aspect. I'm gonna talk about the majority of your DNA. The majority of your, your DNA has who you are on a spiritual level. And I will explain all that as I go. And if you understand that you have the power within you to change that, and why you might want to change it, that it will affect generation after generation, especially for physical illness and for, yeah, for physical illness. That, that's it. And for you coming here or your ancestors coming here and having to have um, karma. Does, does anyone know what karma means? The karma experience. An example, I've had a client that we were talking one time about how the grand, her grandmother and great-grandmother didn't get along with, okay, so great-grandmother didn't get along with the mother, the grandmother. And she's telling me that her mother didn't get along with her mother, which would have been the grandmother. So you think about why is that? Well, it's because, it's honestly because of the DNA, the spiritual DNA. And that's what I'll explain tonight, the power that we have of what's going on in our life. If in fact, you say the karma, meaning we just repeat pattern after pattern after generation. Addiction. My family is, has been traced to, well, on my level of the way I work, about 12 levels of, of addiction. And my, and I was addicted to cigarettes. So I could literally trace it back. Take, it, take that back. It wasn't 12 generations, it was about eight or nine, but still. And, it, and so my family smoked, but it didn't mean, you know, it could have been with an addiction that if it was alcohol or it could have been drugs or it could have been gambling. You get what I'm saying? So was it learned behavior? or was it, a, was it a DNA? If you understand everything is energy, you're going to understand that you influence what is happening in your life and generation after generation. Now, have I lost you? Nope. No. Okay, all right. So yes. just, I'm gonna start showing you a little bit about energy and I'll go into it more. So came up with this chart and is what does your vibe say about you and it has to do um, with vibration and everything is energy and everything has a vibration and it's measured down here from 20 up to a thousand um, so once you understand and science is behind this by the way um, there's a book called um, Power, no, Power and for Force and Power. 
and it goes in and really talks about how we control our vibration. So if we are in a love mode, love and happiness, we would be at a 500. If we are feeling jealous, fear, anxious, anger, shame, powerless, we're vibrating at a very low, very low area. So you want to understand that you are putting off energy and you can be putting off with people that you're happy and joyful or you can be angry and people are going to be affected by it. Does that, does that make sense? How we're affected by energy. A Dr. Moto did an experiment. Has anyone ever heard of Dr. Moto? And Dr. Moto talked about how you could take it, you could put water in a glass, you could put your hand on the water and think anger and the water appeared a certain way. You could think compassion and love and the water would change molecules. So that goes to show you the power of what your feelings will do, your emotions of how, how you're feeling and reacting. So when you do that, you take all, you take this and you begin to understand that you can control this, you can change this. The average person is about 175 to 200, and that is in uh, thousands. Um, this is, well, I'm sorry, this is 200 and this is a thousand. And if the average person is here, then you talk about road rage, you talk about people blowing up, getting angry and thinking everybody did something to them. You're just coming from a lower vibration. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means there's a reason for this. And that's what we're gonna talk about tonight is how to, how to clear this energy. When I work with clients, what I find is that most people are going to feel love and happiness, but then maybe they go down to anger. Maybe they're back up to love and happiness, but now they're fearful. Now they're, they go back up to love, and so it's more of a zigzag. Has anyone here ever experienced a zigzag? I sure have. Yeah, and then we wonder, like, what are we supposed to do? When, so that's good news. You're, you're aware of that, and a lot of people aren't. So you know that you're at a higher vibration just because you're aware. And that's very important. And there's a lot of talk about the subconscious mind. Dr. Bruce Lipton does a beautiful job about it. Have, has anyone heard of Dr. Bruce Lipton? Yeah. Yep. And phenomenal. He's been one of my teachers. And it's about that you can go in and change your DNA. You know, you can do this, you can do that. And it's, it's so true. Um, when you understand that our thoughts are creating our world. And if you look at your subconscious beliefs, that's what he talked about, his subconscious beliefs, then when you change those, you change your life. And that's how you change your DNA, by changing your subconscious beliefs. Well, you think about how are you gonna do that? You just can't think, well, today I'm gonna be happy. It doesn't always work that way. Now, there are things you can do, like being gratitude every day and look for the best in everything you do and everybody, and that will keep you at a higher vibration. That is true. But what happened if you have something that happened to you 20 years ago that is unresolved? And it's unresolved, and you know it because it plays out in your mind. Now, remember, your subconscious is nothing more than a tape recorder. That's all it is. That's it. And I don't believe the subconscious, even though I think Dr. Bruce Lupton will explain you know, the different parts of the brain, I believe that every cell of your being, every cell is holding your, your life. It's holding your memories. It's holding your belief system. It, it, it's doing it over and over again. I've worked with, and I'll give you an example, I've worked with can, a cancer patients. And cancer on an emotional level can be powerless. Like I've just given my power away. Now we have all experienced that. We've all, you know, that, that's nothing just because you may have a physical imbalance. 
but it's, it's common, okay? And so what you have to do is you need to address why are you feeling powerless? So you're telling yourselves over and over again, I'm powerless, I, I have no support, I can't do this, I'm not strong enough. At some point, the scales, you know, one minute you're saying one thing and the next minute you're saying something else, at some point the scales will go unbalanced. And that's where I feel we come down with physical imbalances. And I use cancer as an as just an example because that's an easy one for me to remember about, you know, the emo it could be one of the emotional reasons. Maybe. Maybe. Now, has anyone heard of Deepak Chopra? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, I heard a recording, a video he did, and he was saying that some he was given an example that that a, a girl, he was using an eight-year-old girl, could have had something that happened to her in her life. And as an adult, it could be the reason, the emotional reason why she had a physical imbalance. So there's another, you know, to back up what I'm saying, you know, that there really is a reason. So um, if you're, so in your DNA, you have at least 55%. The scientists have no reason to explaining. They say it's empty. I believe it is your emotional body. I believe it's every memory. Every time you've experienced anything. I believe it's, it's also your lineage. It's also your ancestors. It's also your community. It's all the beliefs you've taken in. Now, I have a couple other pictures I'll show you in just a minute. So, this also shows you the different layers of the spiritual body. And if you're familiar with it, these are chakras. And in, in these, they're representing some of the energy that, that you can portray to, that goes along here. The causal body is one of my favorite bodies I like talking about because as a Christian... It is called the Holy Spirit. And in the more spiritual realm of things, it's called the causal body. And it is proof in our energy field that we are equipped to heal everything. Now, I also believe, and I, I think Dr. Jenny is going to be talking about it too, is that we have it all in ourselves. Our body is telling it all. And that you can access I think everything's a mirror of each other. We're holographic. Does that make sense? Holographic. You hear, I mean, we, I won't go into that tonight, but we're holographic, meaning there's many, many layers of us. And energetically, um, we can be influenced by people around the world. Okay. So, this goes in a little bit about the energy and that if the creator, which I believe we have a creator, is everywhere, and all it is is love, not all it is, it's love, and that energy magnitudes whatever it is you want. So it's like gratitude. They say you want more of something, be in gratitude. If you don't want it, you know, be in gratitude. Everything, because it keeps multiplying more and more and more. So if you go into the fear mode, you're going to still create. If you're in the love mode, you're still going to create. And that's the confusion with religion, I feel, and in a higher level of spirituality, of trying to understand that. The community is, has a big influence on your belief system. The schools, the churches, your friends. You get to a certain age and they say, well, you're all ready to retire. You know, or you, you know, you do this. Well, this is what's going to happen. And, you know, that just gives you some more examples. Or you live in a community and they say, well, you can't get a divorce. And if you get a divorce, you're, you're just going to do X, Y, or Z. And that's just a far out example since over 50% of people, I think, have been divorced. But it just gives you an idea that how we build our belief system. This is showing our subconscious belief. You walk around and say, yeah, everything is great. But down below, what's playing out are the feelings, the memories of when you were anxious, when you felt jealous, when you were angry. 
It's just playing, it's playing literally in, in your fields. Now, this is one of my favorite uh, pictures. I don't, can everybody see it? it Maybe I'll pass it around. So you see this, and, and so let's just pretend this is a married couple, you know, when they get older. But as children, this is what was going on in their life. And they all want to be Superman and the superhero. That's what we really want. But we had things that happened to us in our life. But nobody taught us how to let it go. No one told us how to identify the feeling in our body and what to do to get rid of it or to clear it. We're, we're not told. So we're coming with baggage in our life. So it doesn't matter. Let's just suppose that's the same couple. And... Yeah, you're having a great moment. I'll pass these around. You're having a great moment, but you got to remember you still have your baggage. It doesn't, like I say, energy does not go away. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can change form. So whatever energy you're creating with your feelings and your action stays with you. And what I'm going to do is show you a little bit tonight. I'm going to demonstrate how you can change it. It is so simple. It is not complicated. Here's another one. So a picture, and it doesn't matter if it's a, if this was girls or guys, I just happen to have guys. And so a guy, a, a boy's growing up and he's feeling like, well, the shoes are too big to fill. And these are just things he's felt in his life or he feels of rejection or low self-worth, anxiety powerless. Now I could sit and give you an examples of what those situations could be, but it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't mean that he had bad parents. It just means that's how he showed up in his world. And it's in his DNA and that empty part, scientist says is empty, is giving him his own information of his own life lessons, of what he came here to do, and maybe from an other ancestral time. So this guy, this little boy grows up and he still has all these feelings. They didn't go away because now he's a man or you're a woman, it doesn't go away. And the only way it's going to go is you have to release it. You have to learn how to release it or you're gonna carry it, you're gonna carry your baggage. Everyone has heard that we all have baggage, right? I'm talking about that's what this is. And when you change and dump the baggage and you clear it and release it, then you change your DNA. And your DNA change to love, prosperity, abundance. You know, you're gonna stay a lot, you're gonna stay up here because you've cleared all the lower vibrations. And this is nothing more than, than explaining, you know, families bring on things. And um, even the woman, like I show, our baggage is our inner chaos that plays out. And it's, it's the same thing. Has anyone ever woken up in the middle of the night and you have something on your mind? Mm -hmm. It might've happened a year ago. Anybody experience that? It might've happened 20 years ago, 10 years ago. I, I mean, as every, I mean, I have. That's because it's in your inner planes. It's the chaos, it's the energy in your body that has not been cleared. Because you're probably asking yourself, why am I still feeling angry about something that happened 20 years ago? I've had people clear things that they're in their 70s and it happened 60 years ago. You know, I had a client that, here's another example, that at age six, her mother said to her, I don't love you and I don't want you. Well, you don't know what happened to her mother. You, you have no idea what was going on in her life. And maybe she said it out of anger. You don't know what, what my client did to, to why would the mom say that. So we can't point a finger and say the mom was bad. You just can't, don't have any attachment. But she grew up thinking that she had dysfunctional fam you know, relationships. A husband that cheated all the time. You know, another trauma, 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 trauma. And once she was able, and I helped her identify it was age six, this is what happened, then it all was able to let go of. Now she changed her DNA. That's what it means. That's how you go in and change your DNA. So this is, like I said, just, uh, oh, this one shows your ancestors. We all have baggage. 
Now I happen to believe that I've been here before. Okay, I don't know. It doesn't matter whether you believe that you've lived before. This is my belief. But I believe that I have, and that's what builds, makes up my DNA. That makes up the lineage. That makes up the ancestral connection. And I came up with that. I mean, I've been told that a long time ago, but I also had memory, my spiritual, I'm very intuitive. And so I had experience of, of the relationship of what that happened in a previous time and now I'm acting it out now because I'm here to heal it. So I'm just, if you don't believe me, that's fine. It's just food for thought to ask yourself if something keeps showing up and you think you've healed it, why is it still there? When I get that from a client, then I think, well, let's just go deeper. You know, let's, let's and I don't do hypnosis to regress. I don't do past life regression, but I do because I'm eight, because intuitively I'll see, I see, and I, and I just know, and that I'm able to help heal that. Okay, um, so what I would like to do, um, is there any questions? Because I know I just threw out a lot of information a lot and I will be more than happy to answer questions but what I like to do is have a volunteer Don has volunteered and I'm going to take you through my process of how easy it is to clear what you no longer want what it is that is contributing to your life and the results you have now that you have the results you had in the past that will stay with you in the future until it's cleared so if you'll come up here please Okay, so the first thing I want to ask you is to tell me of a time when you were just really happy, that you just felt so much love. How many children do you have? Two. Two. Yes. That's a, a love you'll never forget. So I understand that. So can you close your eyes for a minute? And I have adults close their eyes. Kids don't need to close their eyes when I'm with kids. So usually. So I want you just to go back to that memory of when you gave birth to your first child. And tell me where, if there's any sensations in your body you feel. And is that a good feeling? Yes. 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 Okay. All right, now you're gonna hold on to that because I will bring you back to that. So now you may open your eyes. Okay, now I did talk to Dawn before we got started and I had already read her energy and asked some questions. So she knew if I put you on the spot, then you know what we would talk about, okay? And I'll leave it up to you, share. You don't have to share. What I want is you to identify where the feelings are. So <clears throat> what I, what I told you is I saw that there is something unhealed in spoken words, something said. Now my question to you is, and I asked you secondly, was there a relationship that has not healed? Is there something from your a previous time that still is, <coughs> is unsettled? Yes. Is it the same relationship with, with words or is that another relationship? Well, how about if we just go ahead and clear both of them? Okay. Okay. That's pretty good, isn't it? All right. So I'm tapping into your subconscious, into your cells, into your energy field to understand, you know, what I'm going to ask you and, and, what I, and how I do this. So the relationship that they're unsettled words, um, is that person still alive? Yeah. yeah. Do you talk to that person? Yeah. No. And is that a relationship that you would like to heal? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, what I want you to do is, and just close your eyes again, I want you to go back and think about what was said, the hurtful words that you said and they said. Where in your body do you feel that energy? In the mind and in the head. Okay. So it's in the head. There is not any place in your body you're feeling it, except the head. In the heart. Okay, so if you feel it in the heart, is that a good feeling like it was for your firstborn? Yeah. 
So it kind of just hurts. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so th then let me ask you this, the relationship that is unhealed, that is in the heart, you say it's a different relationship. Can you think of that person and tell me where in your body you're feeling that energy? Not in my throat. Was there a betrayal? Um, call it that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there was a betrayal and, and the words, <laughs> were you able to communicate how you really felt? No. No. Okay. When the person that <coughs> you had bitter words with, I'm going to call it bitter words, <coughs> in the first relationship, did you express how you really felt? No. No. And did they let you express how you really felt? No. No. So the, you may open your eyes. So the, the correlation between those two relationships would be what? struggle for, for power. They wanted to be in the control. Okay. And you didn't have a voice. Right. Okay. Do you, does that show up with you sometimes in other relationships? Yes. Okay. That you're thinking you may not be enough or that what you have to say doesn't matter. Yes. Okay. Did that ever happen when you were about seven years old or younger in school or five? Did anyone ever shut you down? As a child, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So close your eyes and I want you to think about that being shut down as a child and tell me where you feel that. <coughs> in your body. Um, that one actually makes me want to cry. So it's in the opposite. Okay. So that's honestly where we need to heal. So if I was working with you and I had an hour, I would address, I would address the, the child and I would spend more time with that because if you still want to cry, it's unhealed. If it's healed, there'd be no reaction. The relationship that's in your head, mm -hmm. I'll start there, but I know that if it's an emotional something, it's going to be felt in the body, not just the head. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's, and that's when you said the heart. Right. And we were able to bring the heart up on a couple of them. Okay, so <clears throat> um, let's see how much we can clear. So I'm going to, you're going to repeat after me. It's just a process that God gave me. It's four steps. Okay. And you're just going to do exactly, because I, I've tapped into your subconscious beliefs. Okay. And I'm going to repeat and we're going to, you're going to, you're going to let it go. Okay. So you're going to put a hand on a heart and everything is done with your fingertips, just so you know, except your heart. Okay. So I want you to go to the top of your head and I want you to repeat after me. Okay. I release. I release. And I want you to tap your head. I release. I release. I embrace. I embrace. I align my head and heart. I align my head and heart. With love. With love. Okay. Then I want you to go to your forehead. Mm -hmm. You can keep your fingers there or you can go tap, whatever you want. Okay. You will see me tap because I'm really tapping into what you're saying and it's just easier for me to keep the flow going. Okay. So do what you want to do. So, I I was really hurt as a child. I was really hurt as a child. My feelings were just crushed. My feelings were just crushed. How could someone just look at me and devalue me? How could someone just look at me and devalue me? They really hurt me. They really hurt me. And as now I am, all these years later, afraid to speak up. Now I am, all these years later, afraid to speak up. I feel like no one will care. I feel like no one will care. No one feels the worthiness of me. No one feels the worthiness of me. And I just feel like I'm about the size of a peanut. And I feel like I'm about the size of a peanut. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Now, the relation... Okay, so, all right, let's just stop there for a minute. Now, I want you to take your fingertips. I want you to go up here. So, you've got your crown, mm -hmm. and you're on either side, and you're going to repeat after me. Okay. I know I'm an incredible being. I know I'm an incredible being. I am loved. I am loved. And that person didn't mean what they did. And that person didn't mean what they did. They didn't know that they hurt me. They didn't know that they hurt me. And I am valuable. And I am valuable. And sometimes we do that to our kids. And sometimes we do that to our and kids. And I've done that to my kids. And I've done that to my kids. 
not meaning to hurt them. Not meaning to hurt them. I am strong. I am strong. I am courageous. I am courageous. And I am perfect just the way I am. I am perfect just the way I am. Because I am enough. Because I am enough. People do value what I have to say. People do value what I have to say. And sometimes I'm quite surprised when they listen. And sometimes I'm quite surprised when they listen. I am love. I am love. I am precious. I am precious. I am divine. I am divine. Now you're going to put your hand on your heart. I want you to close your eyes. And now I want you to imagine that you just gave birth to your first child. I want you to go back to that moment when you held them for the very first time. The miracle. Count their little fingers and their toes. Look into their eyes. That incredible altruistic love that you know your life was changed. Now you look down at your child and I want you to see you. It is you that you're holding, this incredible little girl who is going to cry, who is going to laugh, that has so much love and she is loved just as much. Now I want you to go back and think about that first relationship that you said words and in your mind just apologize. Forgive yourself for not feeling like what you had to say was important. Forgive them Next, I want you to imagine the person that hurt your heart in another relationship. And look into their eyes and know they're also divine and they played out exactly how you felt about yourself. You can shake hands, <laughs> you can hug, or you can just look and smile and thank them for being a part of your life because you are precious and you are divine. Take a deep breath. Take a really deep breath and breathe in that white light that is over you. Just breathe in the golden light, remembering holding you. And know that none of that matters anymore because you are always going to listen to yourself because what you have to say is important. Look at your firstborn. Thank them for being in your life. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. How's that? Refreshing. Good. Yes. So what I wanted to just go back and have you check in your body. Now, there again, if we had an hour mm -hmm. and I was doing this, and it wasn't clear, then I would keep going back until we connected all the dots. Okay, right. so now with your eyes closed, I want you to go back to remember being a child and somebody hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. Can you feel in your body where those where that energy is? Mm, it feels like it just kind of exploded out. Good. Go to that first relationship, or why not the first, the first one we talked about, mm -hmm. that there were unkind words. Where are you with that right now? Forgiving. And how about the other person that there was some heart energy that hadn't been cleared? Content. Content? Mm -hmm. Everything's clear? Mm -hmm. Congratulations. You just mm -hmm. changed your DNA. <laughs> now, it should help you. And, and from this moment forward, the mm -hmm. other relationships in your life. And pay attention in the next few weeks how people are really listening to you. And you're going to be like, what? They heard me? You know, they really care? You're, you just changed your life. Okay. And we have to turn down the air conditioning because the energy in here is going to take it up. Yeah, heat it up in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that. Judy, any other closing words um, at this time? 
that it's a lot easier than all the words I was talking about and your ancestors and this and that. But what you just cleared was something that was in the part of the DNA that scientists said that did not exist. It was in your subconscious beliefs. It was in your cells. And now you know that you can say and speak and everybody wants to hear you. So that's it. And that's for everybody. You all have the opportunity that easily to change life. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know that whole, just listening to that, I got kind of teary at one point. I was like, oh, there's a, you know, so I could just feel what was going on. Okay. Mm. So um, we're going to set up a little video, uh, not video, a uh, little presentation kind of thing here for you. So help yourself to any of the food if you need a bathroom break, and then we'll just segue right into it. You can scroll paper wrong here. Oh, you can, yeah, or you can it. pause it. Can, I, how can, do we, I do can we pause? If I shut it off, it'll stop, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, just go ahead and keep it going. Get it going. Okay, we'll just keep going. Just go. Not that we ever have technical difficulties around here. <laughs> So let's see if we can make this happen here. Okay. So, okay. Cool. So don't mind everything that's over here. We've got some technical difficulties. I'm going to show it here. Oh yeah. Okay. So. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So welcome again, everyone, and Judy. Thank you again for your presentation. Um, that was some really rich material, and um, and I want to. What I really want to do here is relate what Judy's saying to what I know about, you know, like that too. So, um, you know, Judy was talking about how we have traumas and uh, really everything that happens to us in our life, it makes an imprint on our nervous system. It's either something that's traumatic and trauma um, and, and, and it causes energy blockages and interferences with our systems working um, at their optimal level, which is one of the things that keeps us physically healthy as well as mentally healthy. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Did this change on its own? <laughs> no, it is. Oh, I was right there. Okay. All right. So here we go. <laughs> okay. So what I want to talk about is network spinal care, which is a revolutionary um, <clears throat> state of the art and innovative way of healing mind, body, spirit, okay? So the kinds of things that people get from network care uh, is, you know, a, a, a sense of well-being. Um, there's usually less pain, fewer headaches, uh, more energy, vitality, more passion, more enthusiasm. I know um, we have a patient that's been with us just a, a short time and she came to me for lower back pain because that was the thing that was bothering her the most. And in our consult, she was also telling me that she takes meds for depression because she's really had a lot of trouble with that and that she was had been feeling especially down lately. And since she's had the network care, she has cut her meds in half um, and looking toward getting off of them because she's really feeling you know, great. And so a lot of what's happening here is when we get the interferences and start clearing some of the energy blockages from our nervous system, then it allows 
for the, the things that are causing depression. And so much of that is what Judy is talking about. We could maybe have that from generations past and that energy has moved all its way through to us into our children. And we have the power to not only change that now, but to change the energy in generations to come as well as generations in the past too, right? Um, so it's, it's an amazing thing when we can change our energy. So first of all, I want to tell you a Cameron story. These are my two kids, which I, I will have that heart connection to that Don was feeling. Um, so this is Cameron right here, as a matter of fact. So Cameron was born in 1984 um, with spina bifida, and we were told that he would likely never walk, that he might be very mentally retarded, and that we may at some point have to, like, put him into a facility that we might not even be able to take care of him at home. And uh, I was very resistant to the whole idea. It's like, how can you tell me my son will never walk? How can you tell me that? How do you know that? My son is a day old. How do you know that, that, that that's what's happening and so um, we didn't find out till he was about a year old that chiropractic might actually you know like really help him out so we started taking him to a chiropractor at that time and throughout the chiropractic care he's had throughout the years um, he takes no meds he um, started walking at age four and he was not expected to ever walk he is not mentally retarded <laughs> Okay, he is today a, um, a part-time mus uh, music, that's what I have to say. <laughs> massage therapist, uh, does a great job with reflexology, massage. Um, he drives his own car. He takes part in uh, wheelchair basketball and some other adaptive sports. Okay, and um, he's at this time 35 years old and quite, quite healthy and he wasn't expected to look like that either. So I'm going to go as far as saying that chiropractic saved his life, okay? And it definitely saved the quality of his life. So what we know about Cameron, too, is that um, during all, all of the years he was growing up, you know, he played different sports and all like that with different kids. And <clears throat> many of the kids that he played with are gone today, as in they have passed away. Um, and many of them from like sepsis because they had taken so many antibiotics for various different things that when they they finally got that one infection that the antibiotics didn't kick in so then the infection went into the bloodstream and um, and so one of the things I just you know really really think about is how chiropractic changed his entire lifestyle and his entire uh, DNA that was in the process of, uh, of happening, you know? Um, and so I just think to myself, if these kinds of miracles can happen in someone that was as challenged as Cameron was, according to the doctors with us, then what can it do for you and me and lots of other people around? So I don't know why we have a blank in the middle of that, but okay. Oh my gosh, no. Oh, here it's we coming, go. All right, it's down. just, okay, I'm just here, flipping too here, fast. Here. Sorry, <laughs> folks. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, what is, <laughs> speaking of stress, I'm feeling stressed right now. No. <laughs> okay, so take that big that breath in. Okay. So, what is stress? Well, stress is a force that changes our lives. Can stress be positive? Or is stress always negative? Yeah, so stress can be, but it's still something that changes us and can cause changes in the body, right? So the stress that I'm really talking about the most here is the kind of stress most of us really connect with, okay? And so what we know is that stress has become a worldwide ep epidemic and that 75 to 90% of visits uh, to the doctor are, re are stress related. And we also know that there are um, uh, 110 million people that die every year as a result of stress-related illnesses. That is a person, uh, that's seven people dying every two seconds. So to me, to really, to really take that on and realize 
what's happening with stress in our society today is just is mind blowing to me. So it's one of the things I've done is make it my mission to educate people about stress and some of the things they can do about it so that they're not one of these numbers right here. So in less than one generation, the percentage of deaths due to chronic stress and disease. So, you know, when I talk about that, we're talking cancer, diabetes, um, immune system, uh, autoimmune, I mean, and, you know, heart kinds of things. So any of these chronic kinds of illnesses we're seeing more and more of rheumatoid arthritis, just all kinds of things like that. And it exploded from 72% to 89%. And it is now being projected that the generation coming up is going to live a shorter lifespan than their parents, which would be the first time in history. We've always gained and gained and gained, and we are going back the other way. So we think about that we're in this, you know, if we live in the United States, we live in America, man, you know, if we have one of the richest societies in the world, what's going on with our health that we're moving backward, right? So, the choices that you make today go back to exactly what Judy is talking about. You have the power to make changes in your life today to change what happens to you tomorrow. Okay? Health-wise, mental health-wise, happiness, quality of life. So, these are the dimensions of stress that affect us the most. We have physical stress, which is like traumas. We have biochemical stresses, which are toxins that are in our systems and in our thoughts. Um, and we have psychological, which is how we think. So what are some of the things that happen? Positive examples of physical stress, because we were talking about positive and negative, right? Stretching, healthy exercise, negative car accidents, falls, uh, lack of sleep, those kinds of things. So when it comes to biochemical stresses, we can have positive things going on with nutritional meals, good supplementation. However, if we get into preservatives, pesticides, tr the unhealthy like trans fats, that kind of thing, we will find that we have some um, unhealthy biochemical stresses going on. And then, to me, the, the biggest factor that affects people's health is their psychological stresses. Do, are they in loving relationships? Are they doing things that are loving for themselves? Or are they constantly in, in opposition with others? Are they fearful? Are they anxiety? <clears throat> so every time we're in those places, you know, Judy had that chart that you know went from the more negative emotions here and, and the, the gratitude and happiness was up here. Um, so when we're in those states of fear and, and anxiety, we're putting out the chemicals of stress. So we're putting out cortisol, we're putting out adrenaline, we're putting out all of these, these things and, and the, the majority of our energy is going to our extremities it's putting a strain on our heart. We don't breathe as well. We don't see as well. We don't think as well, okay? Um, but when we're in a positive way and when we're in the gratitude and we're up here in this area here, then we're also putting out chemicals then. We're putting out the dopamine we need, the serotonins. Uh, we have the melatonin to help us sleep and the endorphins that just make us feel good so we're not depressed, right? So these are just some of the things that I think a lot of people don't realize stress can cause. And the main thing that sticks out to me is that stress can cause a depressed immune, immune system. And then a lot of times then that's when illnesses and especially chronic illnesses start to uh, step in and take hold. So I think a lot in our society here, we are thinking we've been enculturated, let's put it that way. We've been enculturated to wait until we have symptoms before we visit a doctor, okay? So that's what, right? You don't call your MD and say, oh, hi, I wanna come in today, I'm really feeling great. Can you just take a look at me, right? We don't do that, right? 
Um, so typically we call them only when we're feeling poorly and that's and that's what medicine is designed to do however what we can do to take this control that judy is talking about one of the things that we can do is to realize our body has an innate intelligence when that baby that don was so happy to see 30 years ago or whatever it was um, I mean, did we, at that time, do, do we, as mothers, do we come become pregnant and we say, okay, all right, cells, get together, and then you're going to divide, and then you're going to divide again, and you're going to divide again, and at, uh, at six weeks, you're going to start forming this, this neurological, this neurotube that makes your spine. You know, do we, do we tell the body all that? No, we don't. Right, because it's it, it's an it's an intelligence that we were born with. It's an intelligence. It's an innate thing that our body knows to do. When we cut our fingers open, we don't tell we don't tell cells to go there and and heal it up. Right, it just does it on its own. So what we're what we're talking about here is is putting our bodies in an optimal functioning position where the innate intelligence can do everything that it needs to do. So when we have interferences like those stresses, then our body can't heal as well as it needs to do. So that's what we do here with the network care, is we start clearing some of those interferences from the nervous <coughs> system. That way all of the nerves in the nervous system are getting what they need. They actually create new neural pathways in the brain so a new way for us to go along, just like Dawn learned today, because that's what, that's what the process that Judy did was actually create new neural pathways, okay? And at that point with the new neural pathways and the lack of interference, then we can start to just function better. We can express ourselves as humans. We can express our spirit. We can express our minds, which are have infinite potential to them. And we can live a life that we really are happy to live. So um, I think most of you are familiar with the nervous system. Anybody know what, the, what makes up the nervous system? Two major things that make up the nervous system? The brain and the spine. The brain and the spine, and all of the nerves that come from the spine. So all of those nerves are communicating with different parts of the body. Okay, so this one at about T6 is communicating with the stomach, for instance. Okay, so these different nerves communicate with different parts of the body. So if we have interferences at those levels, then that, <laughs> excuse me, that organ may not be functioning as well as it could. And then that lack of energy may eventually cause some kind of issue with things. So whose health, I mean, whose responsibility is your health? Well, a lot of it's yours, but we're here, Judy and I are here to partner up with you about that and take you where you want to go. So here at Touch Like Chiropractic, the things that we do that tell us about the nervous system um, are we, we look at what's going on within the, the nervous system and we have technology, some, some advanced technology to help us do so. Some of you have already had these scans. So we, we, it's called subluxation station and it's, um, it's three different things. Everything is non-invasive. Uh, and in painless so nothing to get scared about right first thing is a thermal test tells us about any kind of inflammation you might be experiencing in the nervous system the next is for testing muscle spasms and any nerve irritation and then the heart rate variability tells us about how much of the time your nervous system is spending in fight or flight versus rest digest <coughs> and renew so this is the thermal scan. This is like an initial exam. As you can see here, this person has a lot of color here, red being the most uh, severe, um, and that it's very one-sided, which shows an imbalance within our nervous system. <coughs> so then after they have had some care here, then this is the re-exam. So less color, 
and less interference running through the system. Same thing with, with this one. This is more of a normal function. All of these right here are showing us where there is muscle spasms and nerve irritation. Is it going to go? Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, so I had just talked a little bit about brain, spinal cord goes to all of the organs and glands of the body, okay? Um, and the autonomic nervous system, we can either be in fight or flight, which is triggered by stress, or we can be in parasympathetic, which is when we put out all those good chemicals we were talking about earlier. So these are the things I was just talking about, the adrenal glands, the skin, the spleen, hearts, lungs, liver even. Would you think that your liver is affected when you're in fight or flight? Most of us wouldn't even think about that. Even your eyes your, and your ears. So a, a lot of things change when you're in a stress response. So this is like, you know, speaking of those babies, Little babies go through a lot of trauma when they are first born. So as soon as we can get to them, we like to adjust them for anything that may have happened during the birth process. The force that we use with that is no more pressure than you would use to squeeze a ripe tomato. And it's a different kind of adjusting. It's pretty cool. Very cool stuff. So what network is all about is, this is number one, this is what I really like to, to tell people about, and that is the healthier we get, the better we adapt to stress, and that's every kind of stress. We will adapt better to physical stress, to chemical stress, and to emotional stress. And so network teaches our bodies to develop new strategies so that you can do so. Remember when I was talking about those new neural pathways that have come up within the brain? So that's part of what that's all about. So we're looking at physical well-being, flexibility, more energy, pain reduction, fewer headaches, um, emotional and psychological well-being, less depression. How about this one? Decreased moodiness and anger. <laughs> okay, so just to review, we were just talking about the three the three dimensions of stress, physical, chem, uh, bio, uh, yeah, biochemical, <laughs> and psychological stress, <clears throat> that there's a difference between go at, getting help for ourselves when we're not feeling well and being more proactive and wanting to change our DNA so we don't get there. And that the nervous system is the master system of all our body and it controls everything about us. We live through our nervous systems, everything we feel, everything we see, everything we hear, every digestive pro you know, process, everything moves through our nervous systems. So we can be uh, at optimal health by removing some of those blocks that we were talking about. Would you like to have and who should have their spine checked? Pretty much everybody. Um, occasionally we even check kitties and dogs in here. So if you have a pet that's having a, a little bit of a something, um, I'll take a look at it. So thank you all for coming to Touch Like Chiropractic and know that we are here on a mission for your health and well-being.